In this tutorial, we'll take a look at uh, adding and subtracting rational expressions, and uh, let's see you now several examples of these. And in the, the first one, um, well, all of them it says to simplify the following, so do the adding and subtracting, or subtracting, and then state the restrictions. So in the first one, uh, we're going to start with some uh, monomial denominators, and then we'll eventually get into uh, binomial and trinomial ones. And uh, so we've got uh, a squared b and ab squared for the denominators. Now, in order to be able to add and subtract fractions, rational expressions, and all rational expressions are, are basically fractions with some variables in them, you, uh, you need to have the same denominators. So you're adding, subtracting the same size of thing. It's like um, when you're adding fractions, you can add two different thirds together, but you can't add a third and a quarter because they're different sizes. So that's why you have to get a common denominator. So the there are the same size of thing. So basically, whatever is in the denominator, you have to have all of that in the uh, the common denominator. So uh, I'll call that the LCD, the least common denominator. And so there's an a squared in this denominator and an a in this one. And so you have to have the larger of the common uh, variable or, or term. So if I, I don't just need an a, I need an a squared. So if I have an a squared in my denominator, well, there's the a squared there, then I have at the, at the, at the minimum of what's in this one. I have an a here, but if I have an a squared, well, I've got more than I actually need for that one. But you need the, uh, the larger common factor in all the denominators. So there's a b here and a b squared here, so we need a b squared. Okay? Because you see this b squared divides into the b squared, and uh, b does as well. So b wouldn't be good enough because I've already got two different b's multiplied here. So basically I need to multiply top and bottom here so that I, I get the same denominator. So see this is an a squared b, I need an a squared b squared in the denominator, so that's why I have to multiply this one top and bottom by b. So that'll be a b squared. This one's already got the b squared, it just has an a, so I need to get an a squared, so I multiply by a top and bottom. So if we multiply that out, so a squared b times b is a squared b squared, and a b squared times a is a squared b squared, so same denominator. 2 times b would be 2b, 4 times a would be 4a, I'm adding. And now I have the same denominator, so I can just rewrite it as 2b plus 4a, or 4a plus 2b, over a squared b squared. So that's my simplified expression. And the restriction, see there are a's and b's both in the denominators. So if a was 0, a squared would be 0, and that would be a 0, so the expression would be undefined, because you can't uh, have a 0 value in the denominator, you'd be dividing by 0. And the same with b, see uh, if b was 0, 0 squared would also be 0, no matter what a is, so that would give a value of 0 here, so again it would be undefined. So the restrictions are that a and b both uh, cannot be, have a value of 0. So on to the next one. Now this 4 has a denominator of 1. So if you see a whole number, there's a denominator 1 there automatically. So my least common denominator must have now there's a 1, an xy, and a y squared. Okay, so let's start with the x. There's only an x in this one. There's no x here, no x here. So my least common denominator must have an x in it, and it has a y here and a y squared, so it has to have a y squared in the denominator. Because, so this y squared would divide into that, that's good, and this is just a y, so y certainly divides into y squared, so um, I, I, both of these divide evenly into xy squared, as does the 1, 1 goes into evenly into xy squared. So you see, you need all the denominators be, to be able to divide into your least common denominator. Now it says least, like if you actually, you know, use like a y cubed here or something like that, then that is another common denominator, it's just not the smallest one. And in the end you would actually have to simplify to get it to be the most simplified. So that's why we want the smallest common denominator because most of the time then it won't simplify. There are a few exceptions to that and I'll, I think it's the very last example, I'll, I'll show you what that looks like. It doesn't happen very often. So I need to multiply top and bottom so I have an xy squared. So there's just a 1 here, so I need to multiply this 4 
uh, top and bottom by x, y squared, the whole denominator. So then 1 times x, y squared will be x, y squared. Uh, this one is only missing the square on the y. So I need, uh, see I've already got the x that I, I need. So I need to multiply this one by y top and bottom. And you see this has got the y squared, so I need an x there. So I need to multiply this one by x top and bottom. So if I do all that multiplying, so here's my denominator, x, y squared, and the denominator of both of them, all of them. So 4 times x, y squared would be 4 x, y squared. 3 times y would be 3 y. Remember this is subtraction here, so minus that. And then plus x times x would be x squared. Now these are all unlike terms, so we would just write it over one single denominator rather than three different ones as 4 x, y squared minus 3 y plus the x squared, and that's simplified. Simplify because uh, we can't simplify anymore because these are all unlike terms and we've now written over a single denominator, not three different ones like there was at the beginning. The restrictions. So the restrictions are, and it's not always zero, but if it's just a monomial, then you just about always have zeros for your restrictions. Because if I put zero in place of x, no matter what y is, zero times something squared is going to be zero. And if y also was zero, well, 0 squared times whatever x is is going to be 0. So that would give me a value of 0 in the denominator. Can't do that because you can't divide by 0. And so those are the two restrictions. So in the second page here, we're going to start getting into some uh, binomial and trinomial uh, denominators. And as soon as you see, well, this is a binomial, but it actually will factor. Uh, the x plus 2 doesn't factor, but um, x squared minus 4 and this is why it's important to be good at factoring so you can recognize how things factor because you need to have that common denominator to be able to add or subtract these. And this is the difference of two perfect squares. x squared and 4 is 2 squared. Those are both perfect squares, so it's the difference of two perfect squares. So this will factor into x plus 2 and x minus 2. So the uh, so that's what it looks like factored now. Now denominators. Well, there's an x minus two and an x plus two here, and this one has an x plus two. So pretty obviously we need an x plus two factor in the denominator because they both have x plus twos. But we also need this x minus two one. So the least common denominator would be this times this. See, this one already has the x plus two in it. Okay, but we also need the x uh, uh, an x minus two over here as well. So that product will be the, the common denominator. So here it is. This one already has the common denominator, and this one's just missing the x minus 2 factor. So this one I would need to multiply top and bottom by x minus 2. So I now have an x plus 2, x minus 2 common denominator for both. And it doesn't matter that you've written them in a different order. This one has the x plus 2 first, where this one has the second. doesn't matter. Just like 3 times 4 is the same as 4 times 3. It doesn't matter what order you multiply things generally speaking, you get the same thing. There are a few exceptions to that in mathematics, but not in the real numbers. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to multiply this 5 into here. So on top here, 5 times x is 5x. 5 times the negative 2 is negative 10. Now notice that I just multiplied the 5 in. If you want to multiply this negative 5, okay, this is what, how it would look differently. If you multiply the negative 5 in, then you would put a plus here. And that would be a negative because negative 5 times x is negative 5x, and negative 5 times negative 2 would be a plus 10. So if you want to multiply the negative 5 in, that's what it would look like. It's equivalent to what we have. I'm just going to get rid of my writings there. And so this is my common denominator. So I'm going to write it, rewrite it um, all over the same denominator. So we start with 3 and then minus 5x. Now this turns out to be a plus 10 because it's actually, it's really like we have brackets around this. And there's this negative in front. So it's like having a negative 1 here and when you expand it in, see negative 1 times the 5x, that's why this is a negative 5x, and negative 1 times negative 10, that's why this is a plus 10. Okay, so it ends up changing the signs of both of those. And there we go. So, uh, need to just collect like terms. So, 3 and 10 add to 13, minus the 5x. 
over this common denominator. Um, I generally will just tell my students to leave the common denominator in the factored form and not bother multiply it out to give you x squared minus 4. If you want to write x squared minus 4 in the denominator, that would be okay. But a lot of times you actually want that in the factored form for other things. And we're not going to worry about this that in this tutorial at all, but that's a, uh, a useful form to have a common denominator often. So restrictions. Um, 2 would make this factor 0 and negative 2 would make this factor 0 so x can't be 2 or negative 2 or plus or minus 2. On to uh, d here. Now um, again trinomial here, binomial here, both will factor. Uh, what adds to negative 6 multiplies to 9. Uh, are negative 3 and negative 3. So so this is actually a perfect square trinomial. Uh, you could write as x minus 3 squared if you wanted to, or x minus 3 times x minus 3. The um, x cubed minus 9x, uh, you can common factor an x out of that. Always look for a common factor first. And then we've got uh, x squared minus 9 when you factor an, an x out of that. And that's another difference of two squares, just like the x squared minus 4 was. So that uh, uh, x squared minus 9 will factor into an x plus 3 and an x minus 3. I'm leaving some space here because I'm looking ahead to getting my common denominator multiplying, so that's why I left the space there. So, uh, and I did rewrite this as x minus 3 squared because it's a little bit neater form, takes a little bit less space, uh, right as that. Now, my common denominator. See, it has to have an x minus 3 squared. There's already an x minus 3 here, but remember you need the larger common power. Uh, it has to have an x in it, and has to have an x plus 3. It has to have all of these factors. So my least common denominator will be x, x plus 3, x minus 3 squared. Remember, larger of the 2. So, see, this one has the x minus 3 squared, but it doesn't have the x times x plus 3. So I need to multiply this one top and bottom by x, x plus 3. This is an x here, not a multiplication sign. A multiplication sign looks just a little different. Now, um, this one here, the only thing it's missing is an x minus 3 because it's supposed to be squared. So I need to multiply on the, I'm going to multiply by x minus 3 and x minus 3 here. Instead of writing another x minus 3, I just put a square on the x minus 3 here. So, let's expand out. So 1x times x plus 3, x times x is x squared, x times 3 is 3x, 1 times x is x, 1 times negative 3 is negative 3, over my common denominator. So uh, I'm going to write it over the same, one single denominator, like that. And uh, remember, this is negative, there's really, again, there's like brackets around this, because they're subtracting that whole binomial. So negative x, and then that will change this to a plus 3. And the only like terms are these x terms in the middle. So 3x minus x is, uh, is 2x. So it simplifies x squared plus 2x plus 3 over this uh, x, x plus 3, x minus 3 squared denominator. Um, if you have more, if, if you have anything here that's factorable, Always look to do that. There are no numbers that add to 2, multiply to 3. They don't exist, so that won't factor. But it's a good idea to do that, just in case that would factor into one of these, because if it does, then it could be simplified more. And you'll see that at the end of the next page, one of those. doesn't happen very often, but it can. So restrictions. There are three restrictions, because there's three different factors in the denominator. So 0 makes that 0. Negative 3 makes that 0, and positive 3 makes that 0. So there are three different restrictions, 0 and plus or minus 3. On to the uh, last page and uh, a couple of examples to finish off here, E and F. So this one, I have uh, binomial uh, denominators to begin with. Nothing's going to factor there. So basically, uh, the common denominator is the product of x minus 4 and x plus 2. So you see this one already has the x minus 4, so it needs to have the x plus 2 multiplied. This one already has the x plus 2, so it needs the x minus 4 multiplied. So now they have the same denominators, x plus 2, x minus 4, and both. So let's multiply all that out. So you're really expanding these two binomials together. x times x is x squared. That would be a 2x. 3 times x is a 3x. And 3 times 2 is 6. Uh, on the second part here, x times x is x squared. x times negative 4 is negative 4x. 
negative 1 times x is negative x, and negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. We're subtracting, so remember there's like there's brackets here. So if you rewrite it over the same denominator, again, this is like, again, there's brackets here. So that negative in front is going to change all these signs. So that's why there's a negative x squared here, because see it was positive here. This turns out to be a plus 4x. This turns out to be a plus x. And that plus 4 becomes a minus 4. Get rid of my writings here. So uh, x squared minus x squared, they're gone. Uh, they subtract to 0. So no x squared in the numerator to, to finish this off. Uh, 2x and 3x is 5x. And four more x's would be 9x. And one more would be 10. So we're going to have 10x in the numerator. And 6 minus 4 is 2. So, and that'll factor, uh, you might have a teacher that um, wants you to factor that. You can factor a 2 out of that. It doesn't really help simplify it. So in my class, I'd accept both of these full marks, but uh, maybe somebody wants you to write it in factored form to finish it off. Uh, restrictions, two different factors, two different restrictions. So negative 2 for that one, positive 4 for this one, 4 makes 4 minus 4 is 0, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, so two different restrictions. Uh, there never were any different factors up here anywhere, so there's only two restrictions. And the uh, the last one here, an F, uh, trinomial denominators don't need to factor both of these. So for the first one, what adds to 2, actually I'll just write out this next line, I guess. So adds to 2 multiplies negative 3 would be positive 3 and negative 1. Those add to 2, multiply negative 3. So x plus 3 and x minus 1 would be the two factors. For this one, what adds to 4 and multiplies negative 5. So that would be 5 and negative 1. So 5 and negative 1 add to 4 and multiply negative 5. Now notice they have in common the x minus 1. So we definitely need an x minus 1 in our common denominator. We also need an x plus 3 factor and an x plus 5. So it has to have everything, all of those factors. So the product LCD is the product of the x plus 3, x minus 1, and x plus 5. In any order, it really doesn't matter what order you write that. So this one has the x minus 1 and x plus 3. It only needs the x plus 5. So I need to multiply this one top and bottom by x plus 5. This one has the x plus 5, it has the x minus 1, but it doesn't have the x plus 3 yet, so I need to multiply by x plus 3, top and bottom. So, so now I'm just going to expand. So x times x is x squared, x times 5 would be 5x, 1 times x is x, 1 times 5 is 5, and we'll do the same thing on the end here, multiplying the x plus 2 and x plus 3, x times x is x squared, x times 3 would be a 3x, 2 times x would be a 2x, and 2 times 3 is 6 in the end. And again, most of these are subtractions, so that is going to change all the signs because it's really like there's brackets around this. So when we write it over the same denominator, this will become negative x squared, minus 3x, minus 2x, and minus 6. And once again, the uh, same as the last one, these x squareds are opposite, so they will add to 0. And so now we have 5x and 1x is 6x. Uh, and this is a minus subtracting 5x. So that all that simplifies to just x. And 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So I have an x minus 1 in the numerator. Now notice that that's the same. And this is what I was referring to earlier. Uh, we don't actually need to factor. This is actually the same as one of the factors in the, in the denominator. So this will actually simplify. So we uh, we divide those out. now. It's a really common error here to write the answer as x plus 3 times x plus 5. But that's in the denominator. See, those, this divides into that once. So there's actually a 1 left in the numerator here, not nothing. Okay, That divides into that once. It actually goes in once here, too. I don't want to write the 1 here, because x plus 3 times 1 times x plus 5 is still x plus 3 times x plus 5. So the final answer is that 1 over the x plus 3 x plus 5 product in the denominator. So that is the simpler version of all of this. So it did simplify quite a bit. Uh, restrictions, uh, three different factors, three different restrictions. Now, so from the x plus 3 factor, it's negative 3. Remember, what you do to solve each of those 
remember you uh, you said each of those factors say so x plus 3 can't equal 0 so if I solve for x here x can't equal negative 3 so that's where the negative 3 comes from the x plus 5 one as well x plus 5 cannot have a value of 0 so I isolate for x x can't equal negative 5 and then even though this divided out uh, here we still would get a restriction from that so again uh, x minus 1 can't equal 0 so x cannot equal a value have a value of 1 and that's the end of the tutorial